Dave Besant. Tunez, 1988. Position, goalkeeper. Games played, 26. Clean sheets, 6. Signed by Willie McFall. Transfer fee paid £750,000. Transfer fee received £800,000. Time in tune. May 1988. John Aldridge steps up to equalise Laurie Sanchez's first half opener from the penalty spot and put Liverpool back in with a chance of lifting the FA Cup. Cue Dave Besson's telescopic arms. The person responsible for recommending the leggy goalkeeper to Willie McFall was clearly watching the game on TV that day. Besson fell to his left and palmed John Aldridge's penalty around the post to help his team to a 1-0 victory. This one save alone seemed to be enough to convince Gordon McKeague to sanction the £750,000 needed to sign him, a record fee for a goalkeeper at that time. Newcastle weren't in any great need for a new goalkeeper in the summer of 1988, since Gary Kelly had kept 8 clean sheets and conceded only 49 goals in 37 league games to help Newcastle to an 8th place finish in 1987-1988. Arriving in a hail of optimism along with Wimbledon teammate Andy Thorne, Besson started in the Newcastle goal for their first game of the season away to Everton. His first task, with the season just 32 seconds old, was to palm Graham Sharp's punted goal into the path of Toffee's debutant Tony Cotty, who rolled the ball into the empty net from 10 yards. Besson's second task was to pick the ball out of the net and return it to the centre circle, as were his third, fourth and fifth tasks. For the entire 90 minutes his face mimicked those of the travelling contingent, painted with a look of sheer bewilderment. Welcome to Newcastle United. Best Moment Choosing Besson's best moment is tricky. It was either the day he left Newcastle for Chelsea, or the save he made in the 2-1 victory away to Liverpool. With the score tied at 1-1 in that game, Peter Beardsley shimmied the ball onto his right foot and drifted a beautiful cross into the box. Gary Ablett managed a skimmed header onto John Aldridge, who was unmarked in front of goal. With the nearest defender six yards away, Aldridge jerked his head forward and directed the ball towards the top left-hand corner of the goal. Managing to leave the ground for the first and only time in his Newcastle career, Besson reached up a hand and acrobatically tipped the ball under the angle of post and crossbar. Worst moment Whilst keeping the Newcastle goal, Besant had a habit of diving before the ball had been kicked in his direction. In the 2-2 draw away to Charlton, Paul Williams found himself clean through in the second half. Instead of standing tall and relying on his reflexes, Besant decided to have a lie down a full three seconds before Williams took his shot. Among the plethora of substandard goalkeeping, however, is the moment when most Magpies fans made up their minds about the bubble-permed custodian of Newcastle's goal. For all his six foot four inches, Besson seemed unable to let his boots leave the ground when reaching for high balls. He infrequently took crosses and found that attacking players were attempting to chip him with increasing frequency as the season wore on. In the 2-0 home defeat to Norwich, Robert Fleck found himself free in the penalty area with only Besson to beat. He chipped the ball which rose no higher than the crossbar, causing it to sail over the despairing left hand of the goalkeeper and across the goal line, despite the best efforts of Andy Thorne to clear it with a spectacular scissor kick. Verdict Dave Besant could and should have been Newcastle's Peter Schmeichel. Picking up England caps and succeeding Matthew Letizia as the Southampton fans player of the season in 1996, when on form, Besant could make breathtaking saves. This ability was tempered, however, by his penchant for mistakes, such as the two moments of madness when playing for Chelsea against Norwich in 1992. His favourite tactic was to leave his 18-yard box with the ball at his feet and launch it upfield into the opposition's box. This worked wonders when playing for Wimbledon with the likes of John Fashnew challenging panicked defenders in the air, with the 5'7 Mirandinha, 5'7 John Hendry and the 5'7 John Robertson, this party piece could never have borne fruit at Newcastle. Judging him purely as a guardian of the Newcastle goal, however, conceding 35 goals in 20 league games, conceding two or more goals in over half of the games he played in, combined with the fact Newcastle only scored 32 league goals that season, 
The poorest return in their top flight history meant Dave Besson's departure at a second division Chelsea, only seven months after joining Newcastle, was inevitable. To be fair on Besant, there were times when the central defensive partnership of Andy Thorne and Kevin Scott went missing. Sometimes it was difficult to spot either of them on the field while the exposed Besant was left trying to save from an attacker with a clear sight of goal and at least two other unmarked forwards in attendance. It may not surprise you to know that Besant dropped a bottle of salad cream on his foot and missed two months of the 1993-1994 season. When it fell out of the cupboard, it sent him the wrong way. <laughs>